I'm Miss O. Hi, I'm G. And, and we're, we're the, the Watching, Watching Dead. So, here we are. We're getting ready to go into the home stretch of season three with episode 11. I, I ain't, ain't a Judas. Judas. Which is ironic given that today is Easter for me. Oh, true. Yes, because I'm Orthodox. Nice. So, go and push that button. Pushed. Y'all should be. <clears throat> that truck through the fence thing, that's just him ringing the doorbell. That's right. He might right. have some thick walls to hide behind, but he's got the guns and the numbers. And if he takes the high ground around this place, shoot. He could just starve us out if he wanted to. Merle was in the army, he off. knows. Mm -hmm. He's got a point. This is all you. You started this. What's the difference whose fault it is? What do we do? I said we should leave. Now Axel's dead. Oh, this is... We can't just sit here. Yeah. Beth and Herschel. Get back here! Yes! Go Herschel. That's like one of my favorite parts You're of the whole fucking series. We've all yeah. seen it. We understand why. But now is not the time. You once said this isn't a democracy. Now you have to own up to that. I put my family's life in your hands. So get your head clear. And do something. Amen. I love you. There's one thing Merle would know. It would be the tactics. Mm -hmm. One, he was the governor's lieutenant. And two, he was in the damn army. Mm -hmm. No retaliation. I went to negotiate. Bad enough, we got biters at our gates. We can't have aggressors just miles away. So you went and welcomed them to the neighborhood? You know, they shot at us. I don't know who these people were when you were with them, but they've changed. They're bloodthirsty. And you're full of shit. You knew about this? I was informed this morning. I didn't know. Don't drag him into it. You're right. This is between you and me. I'm sick of this. Sick of the lies. And I'm not going to watch this town and my friends gun each other down. Well, it's too late. What do you mean, it's too late? I don't know what you're trying to prove, but enough is enough. I'm going to see them. I'll work this out. Well, they're hostile. It's These so are all the able-bodied people we <laughs> have. They're going to carry arms and receive training. You won't get caught sleeping again. One car. That is all I need. Here. Right, there's barely any food or ammo. Been here before. Be all right. That's when it was just us. Before there was a snake in the nest. Maybe we can go through this again. Look, Merle's staying here. He's with us now. Get used to it. Hey. All y'all. Seriously, Rick, I don't think Merle living here is really gonna fly. I can't kick him out. I wouldn't ask you to live with Shane after he tried to kill you. Merle has military experience. He may be erratic, but don't underestimate his loyalty to his brother. What if we sell both tongues at once? Deliver Merle to the governor, bargaining chip. Give him his traitor, maybe declare a truce. Like, everything that they say, I'm being quiet because <laughs> everything that they say is, like, Glenn's, gold. Glenn is wrong, though. He's dead wrong. Yeah. You're the farmer, Hirsch. And you're the black sheep, Merle. Look at what's happened. Woodbury is an arms camp with child soldiers. Cannon fodder in a war over what? Is that what all your work is for? Please. Help me get out of here. I can't take the car. They won't open the gate. I just need to sneak out, make my way to the prison, and talk to Rick. This is a betrayal. No. It's an attempt to stop this before more people get killed. You can do this, Milton. She had to bring his work into it. Yep. This is how they train in Numenor. <laughs> Smart to stay fit. Don't leave out the cardio. <laughs> you know, if we're gonna live under the same roof, we should clear the air. This whole hunting you down thing, 
That was just business. Carry down orders. Hmm. Like the Gestapo. Yeah, exactly. I've done a lot of things I ain't proud of before and after. Anyway, hope we can get past it. Let bygones be bygones. I think Marl is trying to turn things around, mostly because he doesn't want to hurt Daryl. See, and Maggie learned the lesson. Andrea, get your dad and the others. Don't shoot until you know what you're shooting at. Yeah. I mean, this was always interesting to me because, like, what did she think they were going to do? I don't know. Welcome her. I don't know what she thought was going to go down. They were super buddies. Go. <laughs> Claire! Are you alone? I said, answer my question. Open! <laughs> hey. Hands up! Turn around! Turn around now! This is what happens when you pick sides. Get down! We're on the floor. I asked if you were alone. She had a girl. Lori didn't survive. Neither did Tay Dog. I'm so sorry. Carl. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how I stop bitches in my tra in their tracks. Yep. said you fired first. Well, what the fuck? He's a liar. He's lying. He killed an inmate who survived in here. We liked him. He's one of us. Amen. I didn't know anything about that. As soon as I found out, I came. I didn't even know you were in Woodbury until after the shootout. That was days ago. I told you, I came as soon as I could. With his finger on the trigger. Isn't he the one who kidnapped you? Who beat you? I'll tell you what. Next time you see Phil, someone will take his other eye. <laughs> We've taken too much. If you don't sit down and try to work this out, I don't know what's going to happen. He has a whole town. Look they have a Daryl. You poison him. No, I just told him the truth. I didn't choose him over you. I wanted a wife. Once we entered Woodbury, you became hostile. That's because I could see it. See what? That you were under his spell from the second you laid eyes on him. That is not true. And you still are. No, I am there. Because those people need me. And what about these people? I'm trying to save them, too. I did not realize the Messiah complex was contagious. Oh, God dear. <laughs> he sent Merle to kill me. Would have sent him to kill you, too, if you'd come with me. But you didn't, did you? 
shows a warm bed over a friend. Mm hmm. Eh, see, this is why Lori is still fucking things up. You saw him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Screaming like an idiot. He's a little unhinged. Everything yeah, seemed decent. Everything seemed cool until the leader came back and practically shoved a gun in my face. Leave without meeting the last kicker. I mean, older, worse. Gooder. I love babies. Yep. <coughs> Let me guess. Daryl named her ass kicker. <laughs> That's not the governor. You need to do something. I am. Oh, you need to sleep with him. Give him the greatest night of his life. Get him to drop his guard that when he's sleeping, you can end this. Good point. Dishonorable as hell, but good point. Fuck it, man. That was the day that solidified my love for Carol. Yeah. Just that one sentence. I'm just like, fuck yeah, that is my boo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she couldn't manage to run over any walkers. I think that would have wrecked yeah. that car. Because <laughs> that car is low to the ground. Yeah. the that we He ain't asleep. She said the laced his drink with something. I just knew this was the end of Andrea. Like, yeah. This fool. He went up and like, what's going on? Yeah. You got a I mean, a lot of people probably thought she was going to get herself killed right here, but I knew the minute she got out of the bed that she had just set herself up for him to eventually kill her, and it was not going to be pretty. No. Because he's not asleep. <clears throat> So we've just finished watching our episodes for today and now we are recording the commentary. So here comes the commentary on episode 11. I ain't a Judas. You ain't a Judas. Mm. You ain't no Judas. Mm. So mm. what did you think about this episode? Mm. <clears throat> well. It's all about old Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were talking, uh, just one of the things that I liked about it was, you know, when she goes up to the uh, prison and they're like, stop, put your hands up, you know, like treating her like mm -hmm. she's a, an outsider, which she is. Yeah, she is at this point. Um, and then... <clears throat> You know, she handles her business there, and then she goes back to Woodbury. And granted, they can't see her when she's in the car, so they're like, get out of the car. And then she's out of the car and like, put your hands up. And, you know, it's just like, copy, you know. <laughs> Andrea, she gets the rough end of the deal here. Yeah. And she gets piled on a lot in this episode. Mm -hmm. And some of it is fair, but some of it is just not fair. Yeah. Um, especially the part I'm thinking about in particular is when Michonne tells her, I didn't know the Messiah complex was contagious. Right. Andrea does not have a Messiah complex. Yeah, she's just getting her digs in, man. Yeah. 
Andrea, honestly, is just trying to save the uh, innocent people in Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And the people who have just been flat out lied to yeah. by good old Philip. Yeah. Um, she doesn't want to see anyone get killed who honestly doesn't deserve it. Yeah. So that's what her whole gig is here. Mm -hmm. And for Michonne to turn it around as if Andrea is a megalomaniac, that was just, that was so not cool. Yeah. I mean, her feelings are still hurt. Yeah, but she's got to be all girly about it. I would have twigged onto it a lot earlier than Andrea. Yeah. And when I twigged onto it, I would have, you know, got the fuck out. <laughs> right, right, right. Because, you know, yo, I know how dangerous narcissists can be. Not because I've ever had direct experience with them. My experience has all been indirect. Mm -hmm. But simply because I've seen the chaos that they can uh, wreak in a person's life without it being a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. In a zombie apocalypse, if you have a narcissistic leader who set himself up, like the governor, mm -hmm. uh-uh, no. It's like, I'm going to get as far away from you as I can. And up. Oh, Carol <laughs> putting ideas in her head. <laughs> that was awesome. It's too bad that Carol didn't follow through with a... Here's how you do it, girl. Yeah. Go talk to go talk to our boy Daryl. Yeah. And ask him if he's got like some cigarettes, like twenty of them. What? Because here's this recipe for poison that you can use making uh, cigarettes. You know, you just get like a pack of cigarettes, mm -hmm. uh, water, heat source, pot, and you you could kill somebody. Nice. Useful. Good to know. <laughs> I live to serve. <laughs> I mean, yeah, God, this is common knowledge, I think, because yeah. I've known about it. I've known this trick since high school. I can't even remember where I learned it, so. Word. Please don't go out and do this because you will get your ass caught. It does come up in talk screens. So, no, this is not how you kill somebody without ever being detected. <laughs> We're going to do a special on random, scary, frightening things that G knows. And how did she learn them? Some of it's just a simple application of watching. <clears throat> if Andrea had used a different method, uh -huh. then the governor would have died. However, she, she just she doesn't really think. She doesn't really plan. Yeah. She didn't get the checklist. And this goes ill for her because when she got up, he wasn't asleep. Right. She got up and she goes over and she gets the knife and he's watching her. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I mean, there was, that was it. She was, she was dead from that minute forward. Yeah. Her body just hadn't got the message. <laughs> he's trying some things too. Yeah. Merle is starting to turn himself around. Yeah. And he's doing it for Daryl mm -hmm. because for all his faults, for all his flaws, Merle loves his brother. Mm -hmm. So Merle is now trying to rebuild some of the bridges he's burned. Yeah. And he starts off with Michonne and he tells her, you know, it was nothing personal. He was following orders. Mm -hmm. And she makes the comment, oh, like the Gestapo? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, yeah. Yeah. And he's not being he's not being sarcastic or snide about it. Right. He's he's sincere, but he is taking responsibility for it. He is saying, "Yeah, I did this." Mm -hmm. He's not trying to say, "Oh well, it was governor's fault," or "Oh well, yeah, I didn't want to." Right. Yeah, but he's letting her know that he took no real personal pleasure from it. That it was something he did, and he was good at doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that she doesn't have anything to fear from him anymore. Mm -hmm. He had a talk with Herschel, too. Yeah. That was good. Mm-hmm. You know, we when they, they're together, we are just like, huh? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. There's air around us? We have no idea what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, he just, you know, it was, it was good for them to, you know, especially with Herschel, because Herschel 
can sort of go back and say, you know, okay, you know, I talked to Merle. He wasn't, like, malicious. You know, mm -hmm. we just had a conversation. Yeah. Because that's what Herschel does. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that uh, Merle mentions the library because, again, we're seeing that there's so much more to him. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps it up for <laughs> Iena Judas. So for now, I'm G. And I'm Miss O. And, and we're, we're the, the Watching, watching Dead. Dead.